No, it flips up here on this side, but it's tough. Be careful not to break it. This is a Dell Inspiron God knows what because they don't let you have model numbers anymore. And we have to do something that I don't get to do often today. This is also a Dell Inspiron. I forget what the part number was, but it probably is important. Uh, but I still forgot anyway. Uh, they spilled water or milk or coffee or hate into the keyboard. And we have to replace the keyboard, which means we have to replace the entire frame of the computer. And make no mistake, this is the frame of the computer. You actually have to order a whole palm rest assembly to fix the keyboard because, see this metal plate? You see all these little gray plastic things around the metal plate? Those are plastic welds, or what I call them, because they used to be a peg and they got melted down at the factory, permanently attaching the keyboard to the top plastic frame. So we have to do a full disassembly of this base, and I have the customer waiting on me. Not here, but they're still waiting on me. So this is also somewhat time sensitive, and I'm going to have to do the work as quickly as I can. Now, if you have seen any of my disassembly videos, you know that the first step tends to be take all the screws out of the bottom of the computer. And that's what we're going to do. However, I am going to spare you the pain of having to watch this and speed it up. Take all the screws out of the bottom and follow along after that part. <clears throat> Okay, disassembly, all the screws are out, so get the CD drive out of there. See this bad boy here? It needs to come out. Take a closer look. Get the CD drive out. Doesn't want to come out, but it has to come out. I'm going to use a pry tool to try and gently... There we go. Alright, CD drive out. Set it aside. Now, notice there are three big flat screws. Three big flat screws here under the CD drive. You need to take all three of these out in addition to the bottom screws before you get prying. These, these are a number zero Phillips instead of a number one Phillips. Now, all the screws on the bottom are out. It's prying time. Now, I use this metal rounded end pry tool. You can get these on eBay. They sell them as clay modeling tools. I use this rounded end soft metal pry tool, but a lot of people complain about that and go, oh, you're gonna destroy the computer with your metal pry tool. You're gonna mar it up and destroy it. You're a bad technician and no one should listen to you. And that's fine, but uh, I don't really care for those kinds of uh, soft plastic pry tools because they break. They're just a general pain to work with. Ew, there's food in the seams, I think. Oh dear, oh dear. But you just put your pry tool in the seams like that to pop the plastic clips loose. There are plastic clips around the entire thing. If you do it right, even if you're using a metal pry tool, it's not going to damage anything. And that's the thing too, is I've been doing this for years. If you're a newbie, you should probably get the soft plastic pry tools just so that you don't damage anything. But I've been doing this long enough that I have every right to damage everything I want to. So, now that the front and sides have been popped up there, we can extract. Not like that though. Lift up. You may have to pull on the side a bit to free it from the ports, but it should eventually come up. And that's the easy part. 
Everything, everything you see here has to come out. That's why this video is special. We have to effectively do a complete disassembly of this computer, which is sad, but we're going to try and not remove more than we have to. So, first order of business, where should we start with this? Well, let's look at our existing frame here, or our new frame here, and through doing so, we can confirm that they really did basically rip everything off this frame. So, everything must be transferred, even this tiny board here. All the wires, all of it. Let's go ahead and get the motherboard out. Let's take this wireless cable here, this wireless uh, card, this skinny, skinny wireless card here. Let's go ahead and get the screw out for that. Slide the card out of its slot and just let it dangle. We don't have to take it loose, we just need to take it out of its slot. Let's go ahead and get this hinge also. Get under it, pull it up so it's away and it's clear. All right, now, next, um, this heat sink fan mess here. The fan is probably going to have to be unscrewed regardless. As you can see, there's actually a screw which is the same as the hinge screws, funny enough. There is a screw there holding the fan down. Uh, but you don't have to take the entire assembly loose, so we're not going to do that. Um, if you need to take this off, you can, but if I don't have to take that off, I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and start flipping all these flip-lock connectors. In fact, while I'm thinking about it, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and get the flip-lock connectors first here. All of these little tiny connectors on the board. There's a backlight connector, and that's good because I actually bought the customer a replacement that has a backlit keyboard. So they will be gaining the backlight feature where before they did not pay for it and did not have it. So that's pretty cool. If they're going to pay me all the money that it takes to get this done, they may as well get a backlit keyboard out of it all. And given what I know this guy does, I mean, you saw the price sheet for shipping packages. Uh, he sells stuff online. I know that if he's doing that in the night, he's going to be pretty happy to have that lying around. Okay. Um, the optical drive thing, actually, you have to use your fingers to pull up on it. And let me tighten this aperture just a bit. Yeah, you pull up on this and the optical cable floats up. You don't have to unhook the CPU fan. Um, these cables come out. Under the optical drive cable, there is a display cable. Use your fingernails or pry things to slide that back out of its slot as well. Okay, and I hope you can see that, okay. Uh, let me get this a little darker. It's just too bright according to the screen there. Um, let's see. So all the wires going to the motherboard. Ah, here's one more. That's not a display cable. I call this a display cable, but it actually looks like it's the battery cable. So whatever. Having the battery loose is nice too. Over here you have a the same deal. There's a display cable, an actual display cable, not a battery cable that I'm just not naming correctly. That may actually flip up. Nope. No, it flips up here on this side, but it's tough. Be careful not to break it. There we go. It flipped up. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I am shooting this in 4K, and I'll be editing it in 4K. If you need to see detail on these various things that I'm unhooking, please feel free to switch your... make sure that your video is set to 4K. You could even download the video if you wanted to, if you have a download tool for that. So this display cable is actually not coming out of its own accord here. Um, I'm also, let's see... Yeah, the display cable does not want to come out, but I really would like for it to come out. We could remove this optical drive board, and we have to do that anyway. Notice it also has the number zero Phillips flathead screws here. So we'll go ahead and pull that. It looks like there's two of them. One's under the display cable to some extent. 
Now let's just go ahead and get the optical drive board out of the way. There we go. We can even leave the screw in that one. And the display cable is reachable now and should just come right out. And it did. And since the display cable has to come out of this thing anyway, we'll pull more than we need. Um, you can see that the motherboard is still held, but it's not held by nearly as much. So what's still holding our motherboard in? We have a screw over here holding it in right beside the Ethernet port and DC jack. That's uh, also the same kind as a hinge. Are there any screws down here? I actually don't see any screws down here. So we have a we have a speaker here. Although the speaker's going to have to come out anyway. Uh, that wiring's too complicated. Let's go ahead and pull the speaker. There is a. Let me get you a better look. There is. You have to wiggle it a little bit. Apply pressure and wiggle to pull the speaker wire here back. There is a CMOS battery, but you don't... With the CMOS battery, you actually don't want to unplug it from the board. You want to leave it plugged in and just unstick it from the chassis. Let it follow the board. And then, of course, you have this keyboard cable that's butted up against the battery. Get your pry tool under it and... You can pull it back and out of its slot. There really, I don't believe, is anything else holding this motherboard in this computer. So, lift it up a bit off of this plastic peg by the Ethernet port. And I do feel something. I feel something. Something is stuck. I don't know what. Ah, I see it. It's over here. There's actually... Yeah, that could be the power button board. There may be more. Okay, this is holding it. This big ugly metal bracket over the battery is also holding the motherboard. So get that metal bracket. Let's go ahead and get that metal bracket off too. Again, these screws are the same kind as the hinges as well. Looks like all of the screws that hold something structurally are the same size. Get that bracket out of there, and now the board comes up. But I feel that wire. Yeah, it's actually stuck to the board on the other side. So this is a little tough, and this is where people end up destroying computers. If you look here, here's your heat sink, or your yeah, your heat sink fan assembly. You got your motherboard, and you can see this white cable here snaking up under it and it's preventing me from pulling the board right out. What you need to do is unstick the cable. So grab it with your fingers there and pull away from the motherboard at an angle. Yep, that's gonna be tough. It'd be better if I could put my hands on this heat sink fan assembly and there it goes, see? Now I can, yep, come on, peel away. It was stuck to the fan, so if I had removed the heat sink assembly, it would have been stuck to it anyway. There's also the DC jack. That is stuck as well. Let's go ahead and pull this DC jack up. The DC jack, oh, it's actually held in with a very hard to see screw. Let's take the screw out of the power jack. It is a thin screw. Um, there, I so far have only pulled two such thin screws out of the computer, so should be easy to keep track of. The power jack here is held in with the screw, and it's routed through here. Notice this tag under here. Um, let me get you a better view of it. The DC jack is routed through here. And you're going to want to put that back later. But for right now, we need to get the jack out. It can stay attached to the motherboard. All right. Now, this flat cable, which I'm also going to peel up here because it has to be transferred anyway, actually goes here. This is how you end up with a problem. This is how people break their computers when they try to fix them themselves. Because some nonsense like that, they won't be expecting. And it ruins everything. Motherboard aside. Okay, so the motherboard set aside. Now, 
now we basically just need to start pulling things. So let's go ahead and get this battery since the second most popular thing for people to do is probably going to be changing out the battery. So let's take a look at pulling the battery. There's a screw here, a screw not here. That actually is another screw that you already took out that probably went through the case. And that's it. Um, that's really weird. There's actually no other screws holding the battery. It does go under the hard drive caddy there. Yeah, no other screws holding the battery. Um, gross stuff fell through the touchpad onto the battery. We will actually, let's, uh, let's clean this. This is gross. So if I'm transferring this stuff and I can clean it a bit, I will. This is just a little bit of alcohol to clean the surface. Um, they'll never see this, obviously, but I don't really... You can't see it on there either. You, you don't really want to put parts back into computers covered in nasty stuff if you can help it. I mean, let's put that battery back in so it looks nice and clean. Um, also, this battery has a little wire coming out of it. It's not very long. Um, I'm not going to remove it. I don't want to do that. But if you change the battery, you'll probably have to pull this wire. Um, and this is an instance where the metal pry tools are not recommended. I would use my fingernail, something else, not the metal pry tool that I like so much. Okay. All right, moving on, what now? So we've got the battery and the motherboard out. Let's go ahead and pull this board that's all the way on this side because the cable's covering so much other stuff. Um, you can't even see it, there you go. Pull this board that has this cable attached to it. Uh, there's another skinny screw, uh, but that's not, actually that's a hinge screw type screw so we'll stick with that get that board up and set it aside all right here's our here's our hard drive caddy it's held in with one screw here it's a hinge type again one screw here come on come on you can get up that's okay there you go okay they're all going to be that hinge sort. And one screw here. And the other last screw doesn't... Uh, it looks like that is also one that goes through the case. So you won't have to remove that. And up with the hard drive caddy. Get it out of the way. Okay. We're making real progress now, aren't we? Alright. Let's go ahead and... Let's get this display cable situation over here taken care of. Hinge. There's one screw in the hinge here. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that. And let's pull this display cable out of its guides to reveal another screw hidden underneath the cable that also holds the hinge down. And we should be able to pivot this hinge up by force. It's a little difficult, but that's just because the hinge is so strong. Okay, now we have revealed the power button board, which you can see is both screwed and taped down. Frustrating people like me. It's one of those thin number zero screws. All right, all right. This power button board here that was stuck to the fan. It's also under the guide for the video and it feels like it's stuck to the bottom underneath it. Be careful, this is a flat cable. Um, it actually looks like it's gonna make more sense to go ahead and get this board pivoting up if we can. Yeah, and I'm gonna cut that tape. Pull that tape up, come on, get that tape out of here. So I'm going to save it and see if I can reuse the tape, but if I can't, you know, it's held in with a flat screw. No biggie. 
Now that the power button board is up, we can pivot this whole mess out and it's sticking right there and that's the end of it. Power button board out. Um, the button is part of the case itself, so we're just going to ignore that. I'm looking over at the other part as a reference. I see that the keyboard has to be folded over on the new one. Alright, what's left? We now need to do the speakers and the touchpad and this front board. So it looks like the speaker wire goes over that front board. Let's go ahead and tackle the speakers. Um, let me show you what I'm up against here. All right, speakers are here. There's a red wire, red and black, that runs over here. Uh, it runs through this finicky little guide. The speakers aren't screwed down. They just sit on rubber mounts. So you can just put your fingers on the sides and lift and this speaker comes off its mounts but it's still stuck in these little guides and it's going to be very hard to get them back in. I've done this before on other computers and it's just no fun. Try not to stretch the wire if you can help it. But yeah, you're going to have to pull this wire up out of its guides. Same deal with the speaker over here. You can do the thing with your fingers where you just lift it up and it kind of pulls the rubber mounts up with it and you have a speaker assembly here that you can set aside. Alright, now this little board up here at the front, this little board right here, see the wire here? That's this little board at the front and I'm not sure how it stays in but there it is, there's a little tiny here, let's see if I can get you a nice view, there is a little plastic clip holding this little board in and all you really need to do is get the board to clear that clip. Uh, there's a motherboard back here. I can't really be zoomed in that far but I can do it. Put a little pressure on the clip, pressure on the board, get it to clear that clip and it will slide up and out. There we go. There's really nothing to damage on the back side of that board and it's a little sticky there and set that board aside. Now we are down to the touchpad and not really anything else. In fact, uh, you'll probably notice there's nothing else left. We can go ahead and pick this up. Pick up this screen, which grabbed the motherboard because I'm not being too careful. Um, I don't even know what I just knocked out, but maybe I did myself a favor when I did it. So what's this? What's this clear thing? Well. If it's removable, it might not be available on the new part, so I'll keep it. Okay, we are basically at the end here. So the touchpad is held in. It's held in with a piece of that awful tape here on the top of it. Of course, someone's going to interrupt. I'll be back. All right, the tape is off of the touchpad. The touchpad wire here needs to be unstuck from the plate, even though it will ultimately be transferred. Actually, let's stick it to the plate, and let's just remove the actual touchpad wire from the touchpad. Let's pull these screws that hold the frame in. And guess what? It turns out I didn't have to take that out at all. So, you know, whoever whoever's watching this, maybe don't bother taking the touchpad cable loose at all. The whole touchpad assembly comes out. We'll clean it in just a bit after I get done with all this. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God. Yeah, all this food and stuff needs to be washed off the edges. So one more part has to be transferred and that's this frame that goes to the click pad button. In fact, if you look on the bottom of this, you can see the single click pad button right there, that little silver disc. So that's a thing. Three screws hold this frame in. Uh, 
All right. Ugh. Three screws and some food hold this frame in. And that's basically the end of the disassembly process. Now, uh, now normally when I make a video like this, I just say, uh, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly, so have fun. But this time I'm going to actually record it. So let's get the old part out of the way. And let's start transferring items to the new part. We have our... Uh, it's a little gross though. Hang on. We get some of the food off of this thing. Some of the crud that's accumulated in the edges. I don't really want to transfer the goop. Okay. Good. Nice clean touchpad. All right, let's put the touchpad down. And all of the touchpad and frame screws are the same. So let's put opposite. Uh oh, I heard a vibration. Was that one of my work phones? Let's find out. Okay. That didn't go in straight. That explains a lot. That explains a whole lot. There we go. Four screws hold the main touchpad frame in. This disgusting button bar that needs to be cleaned. Again. Clean, clean, clean. Even though it's not technically necessary, I really prefer to clean these things. It's just disgusting to me otherwise. And I don't want to leave anybody with a disgusting piece of equipment like that. Even if it is their own disgusting that has crept into the computer, I don't want to leave them stuck with that. So we won't be doing that. So I've just noticed there is... Yeah, these are all the same, but this one has numbers, which will confuse you. It appears that you're supposed to put this one on first. Something which I did not do, of course. Uh, you can't really see that that well. Here, let me help you. Yeah. So the touchpad, we've got all seven screws in. Touchpad's in. Good to go. Here's our new backlight cable for this. So he's going to get backlighting, which he did not have before. Now, the keyboard cable is going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, but as you can see, it has to be bent over and then back up. Um, that's going to be a little frustrating. But you can also see it's bent at the 15 mark here on the other one because this is a 15 inch computer and it's it's bent somewhat precisely at the 15 mark so we are going to very gently bend it that way not very hard we're just going to give it a crease but not not to the point that it damages the keyboard yeah it's about right 
I actually think it is supposed to be a little bit further back. So this this 3M tape here, peel, and we're supposed to peel and stick the 3M tape Ugh. such that the keyboard goes where it's supposed to go. Now my problem is where does it go? And we can see on this one it gets butted pretty much up against that. So the way I have it right now is pretty much, yeah, it's almost accurate. It's a little bit too far back. So let's get it to match up with what we have on the other part. Roughly there, down, stick. Come on, stick, stick. Stick. There you go. Stick. Stick. There you go. Okay. So we have our keyboard in place to go back together. All right. So what are we going to do now? Well, we need to start putting things back. And uh, that's where things get ugly. It's hard to remember the order of things, but I know that this board at the very front here, remember that white cable? I know that this little board that goes at the very front, put it in at a little bit of an angle. Come on. Mm, that clip is actually really strong. Surprisingly strong. There we go. Alright, the little board is installed. And we can go ahead, try to get it put back where it was originally. More or less. Uh, we'll have to move it later anyway. But, you know, like I say, more or less. That's the same. I just noticed there's a piece of tape here that got caught under the touchpad. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I have a feeling that's gonna be a problem later if we don't take care of it now. See this piece of tape here that I don't care for in the first place? Yeah, it's kinda of stuck under the touchpad. And it's not like it's sticky anymore anyway, so let's go ahead and just get rid of it. Rip it. Rip it and put the two screws back. All right, we have the front board. Now the next item should be the speakers. This assembly here, and I remember I told you these are no fun to put back. So what I'm going to do is get this one speaker here get it back on its mounting pegs these big ugly round things here come on it can be a bit of a pain but there we go okay all right that speaker is mounted let's go ahead and get the main speaker wire that goes to the motherboard wired back up there we go all right, and let's start feeding this wire. Now, this is where it gets ugly. We need to get this wire in these guides here. But if we pull the wire, we may stretch it to where it loses the shape that it's already got. And if we push too hard on it, we could just damage it. Neither of these things is good or helpful to us, so we don't want to overdo it, but it needs to be fed back in the way that it was before we took it apart, and this is where things get really, really hard, because, I mean, to some extent, it's hard to even just visually find the guides at all, and then, you see, it goes under, ah, I should really give you a better view if I can. Of this it it goes in some of these around some of these but then it goes under this clip and then it goes there behind the board 
and it also falls into a guide behind the board here that actually makes it jump around the back of it a bit and then it comes back down here looks like no nah. it goes behind there we go that's what it needs it goes behind and now we're at a point where I can mount this other rubber mount come on might want to use a finger instead of something po pointy all right both of those rubber mounts and let's make sure they're down all the way they are make sure the wire is down in the guide as far as it can go anyway and that's it that wire is done the speakers one of the worst parts is done and over with all right so before the battery was under the hard drive caddy that tells me that we probably should consider putting the battery back before we put back the hard drive caddy. At the same time, this stupid wire here is kind of in the way. Keyboard wire has to be held out of the way too. Very frustrating. But if you look at this, this battery will actually help us to push some of this stuff out of the way. I think... Yeah. And remember, there was no backlight on this originally. So I'm not even entirely sure how this all goes. The backlight is right beside the touchpad. That's interesting. Um. <laughs> It looks like it may have gotten yanked a bit. It looks like it actually gets bent under and then back around for some reason. I don't know what's going on with this thing, but this is just absurd. Yeah, so we'll figure this out later. I don't know what to do with this backlight cable, but, you know, we have the touchpad wire here. Um, let's see. It may go under the battery. Now that I'm looking at it, I think it may actually go under the battery. Yeah, it looks like it may go into the battery, but maybe not. I'm not sure. I mean, it needs to go there. In the end, it just needs to go there. Mm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do with that. So, because it didn't originally come with that. And it's not bent properly, I don't think. So let's just put the battery in place. Take a quick look. Battery's in place. And the frame has to go in later. Let's go ahead and put one battery screw here to hold it. Make sure all of our wires aren't underneath it. And we'll worry about that later. Uh, much later. Now battery is in place hard drive needs to go in this would be an opportune moment to do a solid state drive upgrade real opportune moment but um you know right now they're already paying so much for this and they're so impatient for it because they really need their computer today that you're probably we're probably not selling any solid state drives today let's go ahead and get this hard drive caddy down three screws the uh, more structural kind not the thin kind not the long case kind okay motherboard has to go in soon um, we have a power button board here that needs to go back in place. Remember, it goes over here. And it is held with that circular... Look, there's a post here. It looks like... Uh, yeah, there's a post here and there's also a circular setup to hold it. And there's a tab that actually retains it underneath this metal hinge area, I believe. So, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. There's a tab that goes under the hinge, then there's a post over here, and then there is 
the one of these number one Phillips large head flat screws that holds the board up against the power button. That board is very important. If we screw up and don't hook it back up, guess what? There won't be a power button. And the computer won't turn on and we'll think we did something horribly wrong. When really it was just that we were too incompetent to plug up a power button. This has happened to me before. I made a video about it if you want to go see me complain about how I made a mistake and didn't plug in a power button board. Although admittedly it was easy to make that mistake on that computer. And the computer didn't turn on and I was shocked that the computer didn't work. When it was really just me that had the problem. Alright, there's two plastic posts. Um, oh crud, you didn't see it, did you? There's two plastic posts that hold this board with the long shielded cable on and then there's two screws. I believe that that also takes the long kind. It says 2.5 by 5 so yeah that's the long kind right there. This one doesn't have an arrow so I don't think it takes a screw. I actually think that is a case screw. Uh, we can confirm this with the case. You take it and you put it down and that and yes that is a case screw so we'll leave it alone these little arrow guides here tell you what is and is not supposed to be a screw um, we had a problem with the display cable not going into the optical drive but then the optical drive thing also kind of fit under the display cable so I think I'm gonna put the optical drive board in after the display cable is hooked up rather than before and let's check a few things real fast um, the motherboard's not in yet the shield goes in after the board so do we do the display now or later I would say now go ahead and get your display and put it Put your display down, put your case on top of it. We can also go ahead and pivot this hinge back down and try to get it lined up properly. Because lining it all up is a bit of a pain. Getting these hinges aligned is pretty crucial. If you don't do it, correctly everything just kind of doesn't go together okay there is actually a post there okay Let's see if we can get this one hinge lined up properly not that way does in fact go this way all right so there's a little bit of a hook sticking up that goes behind this hinge plate and we can now pivot that down okay that's lined up the other hinge blocks the motherboard so we can't do that yet but we can go ahead and take a hinge screw that will be hidden under the display cable put that down there And tighten it and that takes care of that then we have another one that goes over here you'll see a little tiny triangle pointing at it and that takes care of that okay now the display cable you can just feed it if you want to it goes under this I believe and then under this large metal clip And I don't exactly remember how it goes down here, but I think it goes around here and down and down, and then the motherboard will catch it later. Okay, like that. Pretty sure that's how it went in originally. 
Otherwise, the, that clip would make no sense right there. Um, let's see here, what else do we have? With the display cable in place but flexible, we could also go ahead... No, let's not do that. Let's not do the display cable yet. It's about time to put the motherboard back in place. I also hope this backlight cable wasn't yanked too hard. It kind of looks like it's had a bad day. Um, motherboard... We need to get this bottom cable hooked up first. I also just noticed the DC jack has its own connector there, but I don't care because I don't unhook things I don't have to. So let's go ahead and get this power button board hooked back up. You may not see me do this. I'm going to have to do it off camera, but you slide it in, you flip the little flip lock down over it. It's the same as the other connectors. It's just a pain because it's on the bottom of the board. But once it's in and flip locked down, you can basically just get it to sit back down where it was before. Use that adhesive strip to adhere it. Who'd have guessed? Who'd have guessed that you'd adhere an adhesive? Eh? Heh <laughs> heh heh heh. Now comes the unenviable task of getting all these stinking wires to not fall under the motherboard. You need this, you need this. Battery, hard drive, this thing says I.O. for input output. LED, which is that front board. Look, the battery fell down again. In fact, let's grab my metal pry tool that I brag about so darn much and use that to fetch the LED board and the touchpad board. The keyboard is inherently bent back, so that's not a problem. And the speakers. And the EDP cable for the display, which ruined half the work that I just did. But whatever. I'm not super worried about that. Oh my god, there you go. Touchpad. Come on, touchpad. Don't be afraid to flex the cables a little bit if that's what's needed. I mean, if that's what you have to do, then do it. Alright, due to the pain caused by the last mess here when I tried to deal with this, the EDP cable gets to go first. So, that's just the nature of the game. Let's get your display cable hooked up. Go on. Um, it can be a bit of a pain getting it to go in here, as you can see. But, uh... I am confident that I will eventually figure it out here. Come on. Come on. It needs to come up a bit more. There we go. Yep. Give it that little bit of an edge there and click. It didn't click at all. It was resistant. Um, we can also go ahead, now that the display cable is down and attached, we can put the optical drive board back down. Remember, it also takes two. Oh, hey, a rig's going by. Great. Thanks for that. They didn't need to be able to hear what I said. You know, that'd, be too, that'd just be awful. If they actually heard me. All right. I'm trying to see if there's a difference there. There is not a difference. Let's go ahead and get this flat screw on this optical drive board. And I think maybe we'll also, we'll use this stud sticking up and put the screwdriver on the screw to contain it, pivot it in place under the display cable, screw it down. That's that, and we're done with that, I hope. The display cable looks uncomfortable. Let's pull it back out, I think. Come on now. Come on now. There you go. All right. Let's get the other flat washer-like kind of screw for the optical drive here. Okay, all the wires are now here. The optical drive is the one that goes into this weird connector here. You remember this weird connector from earlier? This, this little weird connector that is by the CPU fan and it lifts up. It slides down into that groove between the white compression fitting there and the uh, brown base. And you can just push, once you've got it down, 
you kind of have to get one side tight and then get the other side tight. Check it for matching. It matches, we're good. Okay, that's down. I'm gonna do the battery last so I don't run the risk of blowing anything up. Okay, motherboard, click. All right. Continue down, we've got I.O. Click. We've got LED, which is that little front board that winds over the touchpad. Looks like I accidentally closed that connector. Let's open it back up. Okay. The backlight is proving to be problematic. So what to do? Um, we really need it to not be blocking that screw hole there. So what are we going to do about this? And maybe getting a backlight wasn't the best idea after all. Let's lift the board up enough to clear that out of the way. And uh, I think what I'm going to end up having to do is just kind of jam it under there until it fits. You know? Yeah. So the backlight is just desperate to get in my way. Um, I think I'm going to temporarily stick a screw in the motherboard here until I'm done. Just to get the backlight cable to stop getting in my way. Now, the other question is, how does this go in? It goes in like that, apparently. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the backlight cable on top of the battery because I don't care. As long as it's in there okay, I don't care about the specifics. I just need it to go in and lock. And then when I close the case, this whole mess can fold up on itself in whatever loony manner it happens to see fit. But I think I may actually go ahead and just fold it. Um, Looks like I can probably, yeah. It's even got a fold mark here. So if I fold it there, like that, and then what direction does that need to be folded to go that way? Actually, I think it may, I may have it backwards. Ah, what a pain, right? Anyway, let's fold it that way, and yeah, bit of a pain here, but whatever. I'm going to retry this, so let's do this. Let's, we need it to go in with this side up. So ultimately it just needs to loop over like that so if it does come over here I don't want to fold it like that it really needs to do some convoluted stuff to end up where I want it so I'm actually not gonna fold it anymore I'm just gonna put it down here and let the chips fall where they may yeah why don't we just do this why don't we just yeah, we'll just let it do that, and that'll be the end of it. When we close the case up, it'll it'll pretty much take care of itself at that point. These are sticky strips, I bet, too. Actually, that's not a bad idea, but... Alright, I've played with it enough. Let's keep going. This is our actual touchpad connector. Don't hook this up, things will get ugly real quick. Keyboard, fresh keyboard. Now, the keyboard's gonna be a little grouchy. You kinda have to back it up. Back up. You have to put it in at a bit of an upward angle here. 
but then push it down to flatten it to get it to fall in and it's just not going to be nice it's, it's going to be a pain about the whole thing it's just going to be a pain about the whole thing okay come on now go in the socket it's okay all right what's different between this one and that one I think I may have the answer actually. What is this? What is this? Is this adhesive? Is there an adhesive on this? Hmm. I don't think so. So I think it's just a bit too thick for the socket and I'm gonna have to shove it in there and that is absolutely not what I want to do. Absolutely not. This is removable. You kidding me? I'm stupid. There was a removable layer the whole time. I'm sitting here forcing this wire when there's a removable layer. Jesus. Hope I didn't break anything, huh? I feel so incompetent at the moment. I don't understand why they would have that thing on the keyboard like that, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a nerd. <laughs> sure, why? looks like that but it is in straight at least just don't want to put that through that huh that's awfully convenient all right I'll take it let's go ahead and screw this frame back down I've never ever been shipped a keyboard that had some kind of protective plastic chunk like that so See something new every once in a while, even if that new thing is dumb, you know, it's still technically new. <laughs> All right, we're crooked on this side, but that was easily fixed. There's a couple more screws here that look like they go to hinges, and I bet you there's an arrow here. I bet you it goes there. Where does the other one go? It looks like... It goes down here. Okay. So that back hinge is attached. I put the speaker wire in. The keyboard's attached. The backlight's out of the way. It's not perfect by any means, but it is at least out of the way. Yeah. Pain in the butt right there. There we go. I guess that's the way it's just going to have to be, even though that looks ridiculous and it may not be proper. That's just the way it's going to have to be, boss. <sighs> because it wasn't folded properly. Alright. Skinny wireless card. Let's put the skinny wireless card. And the clear thing I knocked off earlier is the little retainer that holds the wireless card and all of its cute little cables. So, that was unhelpful, to say the least. Don't even know that this is necessary, but what do I know? Alright, there's the wireless card, and I don't recall which one of these screws goes to it right off the top of my head, but I'm going to go with the thinnest one first, because that's probably right, and it looks like that is indeed correct. There we go. Wireless card. What's left? I mean, there's really not much left. Um, this is screwed down. These are all down. Yeah, there really isn't much left put back so where are we going from here now the backlight cable I got it crooked that's that's really fun 
See, that's part of the problem with this whole mess is that this backlight cable is just its proving to be the bane of my existence at this point. I think it's ripped apart actually. Yeah, I think I may have ripped it. So let's plan B this. Um, did I damage the wire or is that a sticker? That is a sticker. That is not ripped. That is a sticker. So we'll get that. We'll get that straightened out. Alright, back over here. Maybe we'll just put it over the frame instead of under the frame because frankly, I'm tired of it. Yeah. What actually goes here? On the computer itself, what goes here? There. Not much of anything, really. There's a, there's a screw that goes, got it backwards. There's a, okay. Yep. Yeah. That's what we'll do. We'll just run it over instead, and uh, it'll fold itself up. However, it'll be all right though. Pretty sure it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll it'll kind of figure itself out. I'm not dealing with that anymore. All right, we took a screw out of the CPU fan that needs to be restored to its original location, and we need to put the battery wire back after all that. Okay, so the board's only held in with two screws. There doesn't appear to be any weird bulgy stuff going on. The wires all kind of follow the track that they originally were in. Okay, so other than the battery being hooked up, I think we're done internally here. Should be safe to go ahead and plug the battery up. Yeah, make sure you line it up properly, give it a gentle push into the socket, and we have replaced it. We are good. Now, bottom case, the bottom case on this thing is much like the uh, other bits, it's kind of gross. So, let's grab something, especially right here where the CPU fan goes, it's nasty. Let's get the nasty out of it, especially because this is where the fan goes. And the fan itself is pretty gross, too. I may want to blow that out, actually. Let's, uh, maybe I'll do that real quick. I don't know. Mmm, yummy. Let's blow this CPU heat sink out real quick. Yeah, that was pretty gross. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I got my sticky note gross, but I don't care. All right. Last steps. Let's put this back together and turn it on and see if it works. Actually, before I go putting all the screws in, I kind of want to turn it on, but I don't really feel like I can do that yet. need to get this reassembled. Come on. Hmm. Corners don't want to snap, but that's typical. Okay. So, once that's together, we have the three flat screws here that need to be done. Remember, there's the three under the CD drive area. They need to go in.
Okay. Once the three flat screws are in place, put your optical drive back into its bay and put your small optical drive retainer screw back through the back here. And now it's just a matter of putting all these screws back in the case. And boy, are there enough of them or what? Man, oh man. Okay. So all these screws are going to go back in the case. And uh, frankly, at this point, you probably are better off just shoving them all back in the holes and then screwing them down. There is one more thin one, actually. That's interesting. I wonder why. I wonder what I missed. I must have missed something, surely. Um, if any one of these long screws sticks out too far, I will try a thin screw instead. I don't think it will. This one seems short. And it uh, actually, it goes over here. The thin screw goes over here by the ethernet. I don't know how I didn't see that before. At least it looks like it does. But, eh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe, maybe I am missing something here. Oh, there's a, there's a screw over here too. This one's actually a thin screw. Okay. And uh, it looks like I am missing one of the case screws, which is not entirely unusual, to be perfectly honest. I may have put a screw somewhere I shouldn't have inside. I don't know. But, um... I mean, reassembly is, at this point, literally just the opposite of disassembly. You just tighten the screws up. Not complicated, not difficult to understand. Anybody can tighten a bunch of screws up. Very nice. All right. Okay. All right, let's turn it on and see if it burns. Ooh. Yeah, we can also take this protective layer off. I hate this vinyl, but it is quite satisfying peeling it up. smell anything burning? Ooh, backlight. Hey, the backlight works. That's cool. Hey, the computer's coming on. That's also pretty cool. Uh, let's boot it up. While we're at it, let's get this nasty, dirty, dirty screen cleaned up. And that touchpad, too. Good lord. Ugh. Yeah, screen first. Good lord. There's so much stuff that fell out of the computer onto the LCD. It's ridiculous. Oh, yuck. Gross, gross, gross. It's amazing how much nasty stuff keyboards can hold. And then this touchpad is pretty gross, too. Yeah. It's pretty gross. I'm actually going to use my pry tool to clean the edges of this touchpad a bit. 
Nasty. Nasty. But it will get better. At least I'm counting on it. Nice. Yeah. Yep, nice convincing layer of yellow goop on this alcohol riddled paper towel. Clean, clean, clean. Want to give it back to the customer looking better than when they brought it in. Even if they're used to eating bagels over it and spitting on it the whole time. It's not going to leave my place not being clean. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Yeah, it's working. The caps lock works, so the keyboard's up. Yeah, we're good to go. All right. Well, thank you for watching this repair job. Um, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And look down at the bottom for links where you can support me. I'll go to my website. You can donate some money if this helped you and you've got a few spare bucks you'd like to throw at me. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Take care.